Okay, uh, now let's uh, try to study the essential singularity. Uh, basically, we're going to study something even bigger. Uh, we're talking about the Lorentz series expansion. Uh, first, let's set up the series. Definition 1.10. Okay, so if Zn n is from 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and plus minus infinity, so it's uh, not just one series, it's a two ended series. It go to positive infinity, it also go to negative infinity. Is a double link infinite sequence doubly infinite sequence of complex number okay uh, we say n is from negative infinity to past infinity z sub n is absolutely convergent if both positive and from n from 0 to infinity the n and the negative and is from 1 to infinity z negative n so we don't want to put n from negative 1 to negative infinity we still put 1 from n from 1 to infinity, but we put a negative sign, so it's uh, the negative part. Those two partial series are absolutely convergent. Okay. So we say this doubly infinite sequence absolutely convergent if two infinite sequences one is a positive one is a negative they are both absolutely convergent in this case when this happens in this case the the doubly infinite sequence series not sequence series this is doubly infinite series is equal to the series n from 0 to infinity z n plus n from 1 to infinity z negative n okay you add them together that is uh, the series the value of it okay uh, if so they are they are about the numbers if u sub n is a function on a set S for n equal to 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on and uh, a sigma n from negative infinity to positive infinity u sub n of a S that's not S, set S, the variable S, is absolutely convergent for each S in a set S, then then the convergence so here this is a pointwise convergent this is a pointwise for each point it is uniform uh, absolutely convergent absolute convergent. then we say the convergence is uniform uniform means this the convergence n does not depend on the selection base point s 
uniform over the set S if both the positive end UN and the negative end U negative N converge uniformly on S. Okay, so if this part is uniformly converging, this part is uniformly converging, then put them together, we see this doubly infinite series is uniformly convergent. All right. Uh, we only study this absolute convergence because remember, for the power series, we have the absolute convergence in the convergent disk. Outside, it's not convergent. All right. So that's a uh, that's because that's why we always uh, concern the absolute convergence. And also here the remark. One, we are mostly, we are interest, interested in absolute convergence. That's the first one. We are mostly interested in absolute convergence. And second, this convergence, this convergence by definition is not the limit like this. Well, in general, I would just say in general. Okay, in certain time, this one converge, but the original one is not converged. So if if this converges in the above sense, in this sense, if the convergence, this doubly infinite series converges in this above sense, then, then they are equal. Not n, this is k. But the limit n approaches infinity, sigma k from negative n to n, zk exists. It does not ensure this doubly infinite sequence converges absolutely, converges. It does not ensure that. So it's not a sufficient condition. It's not a sufficient condition. It's just a necessary condition. So it, you cannot always put them equal. Uh, in the book, they provide this example. For example, the sigma one over n, n is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Of course, n is not equal to zero. This one, if we talk about this sense, Of course, this is always zero because it's symmetric. You have positive part, negative part, they cancel each other. But clearly we know that the series n from one to infinity, one over n diverges. A harmonic divergent series, right? So that's an example. When you have this, uh, this special convergence, it does not generally imply the, uh, this general convergence. Okay, so in the rest of the discussion, whenever you see this doubly infinite series, it always, the convergence always understood like this. Yeah, positive part converging, negative part converging, separate, separate, all right? Okay, now this is a general uh, definition. Now let's say, so let, Uh, 
R1, R2 are two positive numbers. Could be zero, could be infinite. R1 is less than R2. And A is a number in the complex plane, arbitrary number in the complex plane. Then we define, we call it the analysis. Analysis of A with inner radius R1, outer radius R2 to be the set of z r1 less than ops value of z minus a less than r2 okay so this is r1 this is r2 analyst this is analyst the donut shape this is analyst and when this R1 is equal to zero, when the R1 is equal to zero, this is a punctured disk, right? When R1 is equal to zero, you just get a punctured disk. Okay. So that's uh, our domain, that's our domain. Why we want to remove the center? Because the center normally will be essential singularity, all singularity, not essential, all right? Okay, so now let's state our uh, Lorentz series development. Let me change a, a pen. Okay, so 1.11 Lorentz series. development okay so let f be analytic in the analyst a and n of a r1 r2 Then f of z can be written as uh, sigma n from negative infinity to positive infinity, a sub n z minus a to nth power, where the convergence is absolute. and the uniform over the analysis a little r1 little r2 with the closure so it's not uniform over the original disk but whenever you shrink a little bit it's all uniform if r1 less than little r1 less than oh, sorry less than r little r2 less than r2 okay we do need a compact domain also the coefficients a sub n uh, of about the, are given by the form a sub n is 1 over 2 pi i the integral f z over z minus a a a is the center z minus a to the power of n plus 1 dz along gamma what is a gamma where gamma is a circle Z minus A equal to R for any R. The condition for R is R between R1, R2. You have to be inside. Okay? And this series
is unique. The series A is unique. Okay. Okay, now let's see. This is a two-ended, uh, two double infinite series expansion. Power series expansion is a one and infinite series expansion. Okay. Let's see the proof. Let's see the proof. So if we do have capital R1 less than little r1 less than little r2 less than capital R2, and uh, when you choose radius as R1 or R2, we name the circle gamma 1, gamma 2, uh, the circles Z minus A is equal to R1, Z minus A is equal to R2, respectively. Well, you have a circle like here. You have a circle like here. Of course, they are homotopic. Then gamma 1 is homotopic to gamma 2 in the analysis. In the domain, they are homotopic. So by the Cauchy theorem, we know that the interval will be unique for any analytic function g in this analysis a r1 r2 the integral of g along gamma 1 is equal to the integral of g along gamma 2 all right so you always have such thing so what we get so this integral is independent of gamma so that's why we can say whatever radius so this uh, 1 over 2 pi i integral along gamma f z over z minus a to power n plus 1 is independent to r radius r it's independent to the radius r Okay, so that an is uh, is going to be constant when you have such definition. You don't have to mention really mention what is the radius of r. Okay, uh, now let's uh, let's try. I'm going to do define two supporting functions. So define f two. We define f two first. F two is Is defined op uh, defined over the open disk centered at A with radius R two. By what? By this, uh, f two of z is equal to two pi uh, one over two pi i integral along w minus a is equal to R two. Outer one, outer one, and f w over w minus z d. Okay, so here we have what is a z? z minus a should be less than r2, only inside, less than r2. And r2 is, of course, between r1, a capital R1, and a capital R2. Okay, all right, so this f of z, f2 of z is well defined and analytic. 
well defined and analytic. So that's a F2, F2 because we use R2. Okay, uh, then we define, we're going to define our, uh, F1. Define this uh, G to be the Z, Z minus A greater than R1. Z minus A greater than kappa R1. Let's just, just say kappa R1. Right, then F1 from G to C. F1 from G to C is defined by what? By F1 of Z is equal to negative 1 over 2 pi i integral W minus A is equal to R1 F of W over W minus Z dz, w, dw. So here Z minus A should be greater than R1. It should be greater than R1. Of course, R1 is bounded by capital R1 and the capital R2. And F1 of Z, uh, F1 of Z is well defined and analytic. Okay, so what is R1, R2? So R2 is defined this way, defined over this disk. The radius is, uh, the radius is R2. This is disk, this is F2. And F1, is defined over this shadow of the ridge. Okay, so if you put these two domains together, then it is exactly the, you put these two domains together. Well, I, I, I don't need this uh, coordinate system. It's actually little one, R1, R2, and the bigger one, big radius. So the shadow of the region, this is the shadow of the region. That's overlap, overlap. Greater than little R1, less than little R2. That's a shadow, that's exactly the region we're trying to discuss between gamma one and gamma two. Okay, between gamma one and gamma two. Okay, so that's a F1, F2. Uh, let Z be in analysis. A and N. A, R1, R2. Z is from the analysis, then we get Z minus A is bounded by R1 and R2. Z minus A is bounded by them, okay? Okay, Z minus A is bounded by them. Uh, we just choose little r1, little r2, so that capital R1 less than little r1 less than Z minus A, ups value less than little r2 less than capital R2. We insert two points be in, in this uh, uh, gap. Okay, so we have A, we have a Z, and then we get a small circle. This radius is R1, and then we have a large circle. This radius R2, they include, between, between R1 and R2, that is Z. And for gamma two, we choose counterclockwise orientation. For gamma one, we choose clockwise orientation. And this is just a single point. So we can find a straight segment, we call it lambda. The straight segment will, will connect 
the outer circle and the inner circle. Okay? So you see here. Let gamma 1 of a t be a plus r1 eit and the gamma 2 of a t a plus r2 eit. And of course, t is between 0 and uh, 2 pi. And we choose a straight segment lambda going from a point on gamma 1 radically ra uh, ra radially radially just from here, readily go to gamma 2. To gamma 2. Of course, we don't want it to pass, which misses z. We don't want it to pass z. Now let's check. We will have, you see, here, we're going from inner to outer. We start from here, we go inner, outer. And along gamma 2, we go counterclockwise orientation and back to this point. And then this part, we go inner. Go inner to this point, original point. Then we're going to do clockwise. So we have something like this. Go outside and the circle. And be careful here, I'm going to draw two separate segments. Actually, they coincide so inside and then I go clockwise back okay so these two segments are uh, overlap are the same segment but one go one direction the other one go the opposite direction okay so Z is here Z is here uh, We know that this uh, gamma 1 is homotopic to gamma 2. Gamma 1 is homotopic to gamma 2 in this analysis, AR1, R2. So the closed curve, the closed curve, the closed curve we just demonstrated, this one, the gamma is, is what? This is lambda. So lambda plus, remember gamma 1 is a uh, counterclockwise, and then go backward, negative lambda, then you go clockwise. Uh, here, possibly we're going to do subtraction. Clockwise. Okay? So this curve is homotopic to 0. It is homotopic to zero. Homotopic to zero means uh, the winding number with respect to the exterior point is zero. Remember that this homotopic to zero is stronger than the homologous to zero case. Okay, and uh, we also know that the winding number, you check that, you will see that the winding number of uh, this gamma with respect to this point Z is exactly one. And the winding number of gamma one, gamma one with respect to Z. Where's gamma one, where's gamma? Uh, no, this is gamma two, this is gamma one. Ah, this is gamma two outside. So we are lambda, this is gamma two. Minus lambda, this is gamma 1, my bad, sorry. Awesome. So gamma 1 in uh, with respect to n, this does not include it, so the winding number is 0. And uh, gamma 2, the winding number of gamma 2 with respect to n is equal to 1. So by the Cauchy integral formula,
by the Cauchy integral formula, we have the f of z is equal to 1 over 2 pi i integral f of w over w minus z dw along gamma along gamma and uh, here lambda lambda they are cancelled so you will have the integral over gamma 2 minus the integral over gamma 1 Right, and uh, clearly you see this one is f two, together with the negative sign is f one. So it's f two of z plus f one of z. So you see here that's the purpose we define such two functions. We got the decomposition of a bigger function f into two parts. Into two parts. So next we're going to expand this f one f two to the power series. We're going to expand them one by one. What is F2? F2 is defined over the open disk BAR2 to C, and it is analytic. So F it's analytic. So F2 of Z is equal to sigma n from 0 to infinity a sub n z minus a nth power okay uh, now we are going to define the power series for f1 or we are going to develop a power series for f1 but what is f1? f1 is defined to from the It's defined like this. You puncture. You puncture the center. Well, this is not uh, a disk. If it's not disk, we don't have such develop, uh, expansion. What we can do is that we are going to flip it. You see? If we flip it, we will change the infinity to be 0. And this becomes uh, infinity is 0. This is infinity which is zero. And this exterior part becomes interior part. So then, then you have a disk, okay? So now we do what? We, for F2, we consider, consider what? Consider Z greater than, a Z has modulus between this is capital R1. Ops value of Z is between 0 and 1 over R1. Because here, it's ops value of Z is greater than R1. Then when you flip it, it's ops value of Z is less than 1 over R1, right? In this part. After you flip it, you get this. You can see this one as a, as a new function, new variable, W. Right, W is one over Z. Z is one over W, so we define G of Z as uh, F one over A plus one over Z. Well, now we have a W. You flip it, you will get get back. You have W. You flip it, you will get back to the uh, to a point here, and you of A, A plus it. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the strategy. Why do you see this one over Z? One over Z just want to make this infinite to zero and we want a disk, not the analyst, not the analyst. Okay, uh, after we get this, uh, remember here Z cannot be zero because you have a reciprocal. So we want to claim we want claim that 
a equals zero is a removable singularity. It is a removable singularity. Okay, now let's see what is removable singularity. How do we prove it? Uh, we choose R greater than R1. We choose R greater than R1. Uh, let's, let's analyze it. F1 of a Z is, is what? It's a 1 over 2 pi i negative negative 1 over 2 pi i integral along gamma when you have this r f of w over w minus a dw w minus a dw no z not a we're talking about the z w minus z dw and the z is outside the z is greater than r greater than r1 z is outside Okay, so what can we study? So FW, FW, W is on the circle. This is fixed. So W is belong to the gamma. Gamma is compact. Gamma is compact. So FW, upside of FW has a up, an upper bound. That's called M on gamma. FW has upper bound M on gamma. Okay. Uh, now let's uh, let's see. This W minus Z, if we put up value, is the distance. Is the distance between z and the w. The distance between z and the w, of course, it is greater than or equal to the distance between z and the gamma. The distance between z and the gamma is a minimal value among them. Right? So you have gamma here, you have a z. This is W, this is Z. Yeah. Okay, that's how the, you will measure the distance. Uh, it's always this way. Now let's check the ops value of F1 of a Z. It's going to be less than or equal to, here is a 2 pi integral along gamma F W ops value W minus Z dw and uh, this one is 2 pi 1 over 2 pi this is m upper bound and here is you choose a it's greater than or equal to but it, once you flip it to the denominator it's less than or equal to the distance uh, let's not use rho it's just a distance between z and the gamma and then you multiplied by the 2 pi r that's a the per circumference of a, the, the perimeter, circumference of circle. And you cancel uh, 2 pi, 2 pi, you will get m r over the distance d gamma. So it's a, actually it's a, a, a Cauchy estimation. Okay, so that's what we got so far. Now let's see, we're going to show a, a equal to zero is a removable singularity. How do you make z approach z approaches zero? Z approaches zero. Z approaches zero, then a plus one of z will approach infinity. Right? A of one plus z will approach infinity. So basically, for f one of z. 
we are going to allow z approach infinity. When z approach infinity, that's a, the equivalent idea. z approach infinity, then the distance between z and the gamma will approach infinity. Right? This distance between z and gamma is fixed. Remember, we have this and we fix it. We fix it. You, you, you will move z uh, far, far away. Then this gamma will be always, uh, will always satisfy it. Okay, the d distance between z and the gamma approach infinity, the numerator is fixed, the denominator approach infinity, the, you will get f of z modulus will approach zero. So what we have, so the limit z approaches zero, g over z, z approaches zero, f one over a plus one over z, it is zero. So z equal to zero is removable. It is removable. Okay. It is removable, then we just define g of zero is equal to zero. And G is analytic on this open disk B centered at zero with the radius one over R one. Centered at zero with the radius one over R one. Okay, then it's analytic over the open disk disk, then G of Z is sigma N from one to infinity B N Zn, z to n's power, is a power series representation. Uh, well, this is f1 over z, uh, a, a plus 1 over z, a plus 1 over z. Let's, let's re recall it. If this is w, w is a plus 1 over z, then what is z? z is w minus a flip, right? W minus A and the reciprocal. So F1 of W is equal to sigma N from 1 to infinity Bn W minus A to power N. So if you want to write it neg dense power. Let's just change your variables. So we have the power series expansion for F1, F1. And uh, all these are from the power series uh, expansion of our analytic function. They are absolutely converging, the uniformly convergence uh, over the compact set, over the compact set. Okay, so if you add them together, you will get it. The uniqueness uh, come from the, the expansion of F and the G. And the, Uniform convergence also come from the expansion of uh, f and g, uh, f one, f two, not f and g, f one, f two. Okay, so we get this uh, Lorentz series expansion, Lorentz series expansion. Okay, so let's stop it here, and we will continue the discussion of this part in the next video. Thank you very much.